No matter how much you love them, try to refrain from screaming during the scenes because these are new improvisers. They're just getting their legs, and a scream from the audience could send them right up there to jump all over you. I'm just kidding. They won't actually do that. But we do, we do want to keep it cool during the scenes themselves. Between the scenes, after the scenes, go crazy, go wild. Fill them with your love because that's why we are here tonight. You will be amazed with what these people can do. They've only been studying improv for eight weeks. Eight weeks, and they have the guts to get up on this stage with nothing in their heads, take your suggestions, and do improv. How many of you find that frightening, horrifying, scary? Right? Okay. So, what, right? And these guys are all going to be on stage. Good. All right. Well, guess what? It is a skill that can be learned, and they're going to show you the skill they have. You have to be able to give us your suggestions, and it goes like this. We'll ask a question of you, you'll answer the question. Like, tell me something that's green. Yell it out. Burgers. Eggs. Broccoli. What was that? Watermelon. Watermelon. On the outside. Right? Whatever you yelled out, right answer. We'll take one of those suggestions and we'll make it rock in our scene. It's as simple as that. If you want to be a great SAC participant, you need to know how to applaud. Show me you know how to do that right now. afraid of us yet. Yeah. All right, tell them who you are. Aaron, Bobby, Rod, Betsy, Armando, Akil, Marvin, James, Noah, Chris, Spencer, Daniel, Aaliyah, and Scott. Awesome! Yeah. 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 Scott, Aaron, yeah. Daniel, Spencer, Chris, Noah, James, Marvin, Akil, Armando, Betsy, Rod, Bobby, Aaron. There you go. Yeah. Right there. I know, forward and backwards. That's the agility of improv, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Any direction you offer it, we can offer it that way as well. So, um, all of you choose a spot on the stage. I want my categories, folks, right dead center. The first game that we're going to play for you is a game that's called Categories. It's very often an elimination game that we work with our ensemble in the weekend shows to try to determine who's going to get to go first in the show or who the kings are in a king of a hill competition. And it goes like this. Categories are lists of things, things that you can list, like things that you find at Walmart, things that you find in an airplane, whatever it is. When I point to these players, they have to come up with something on that list fast. If they hem, if they haw, if they stutter, if they stammer, if they say something that's already been said, or say something that doesn't belong on that list, 
It's your job as our audience to eliminate them by yelling the word die. <laughs> Let's practice that with a count of three. One, two, three. Die! All right, awesome. Who has a category to challenge these folks? Who has, what do you got? Foods. Foods. Kinds of food, people. Foods. Here we go. Cake. Peanut butter. Sushi. Watermelon. Hot dog. Pasta. Chunky soup. Spaghetti. <laughs> Watermelon again. Give it up for Spencer, everybody. Our first guest of the night. Let's go on five left, four left to Luna. Who has a category challenge? You see, what do you got? Colors. Colors. You people are being so nice. Foods and colors. Here we go. Colors. Purple. Magenta. Fuchsia. Pink. Red. Blue. Scrolling. When you play this game, if you choose one thing in your head, it's undoubted that somebody else in that line is going to say it before you. So you have to have more than one idea scrolling. You, ma'am, are so patient. What do you have? Movies. Movies. What kind? What kind of movies? Action. Action movies. Action movies. Here we go, gentlemen. Action movies. Great Gatsby. Fast Six. <laughs> Rambo. Okay. <laughs> You didn't say die, you said, what? Isn't a mayonnaise an instrument, Oracle? <laughs> mayonnaise is not an instrument because it is so small and <laughs> slimy. Small and slimy. Small and slimy. There are no small slimy instruments, please. I have a strange rash on my body. What should I do with um, <laughs> Can you see this rash? Please open this. <laughs> do you have a picture of it or something? Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, let's just go with Oracle. You are all knowing. I guess you don't have to see this man's rash, though so I want to. Um, what, what is that rash, Oracle? Your rash is something very small and infectious. And very sickening. More. <laughs> Why? This isn't for all of us. How many of you have lost socks doing laundry? Those little escapees. Oracle, why? I want to know why we lose socks, but I just want to know where do they go? Socks go to the place where it is always burned with ashes and rags. More. More. <laughs> Okay, it's you, ma'am. Which is better, key lime or apple pie? Oh my, the pie question, Oracle. This is not the first time we've entered the pie controversy. Which is better, key lime or apple? The best pie is key pie. <laughs> key pie, no more questions. <laughs> Time. Bring me my carpool, people. So this is a game, one of my favorites actually, called carpool. And here's how this works. We have a driver who's who's taking a carpool to where? To where? China. Taking a carpool to China. It's going to be a wet carpool, but it's taking a carpool to China. And so here's what's going to happen. We're going to get an emotion for each one of these people. Then. The driver is going to drive to the destination, picking up people, and as each person enters the car, everybody in the car will absorb and adopt their emotion. They will get off in the same order that they got on and return to the previous emotion, and we'll be back to the driver in the end. It's that simple and yet that impossible. So, for our driver here, raise your hand if you can think of a positive emotion. A positive emotion. What is it? Happiness. Happiness. So you are feeling happy. You are feeling full of joy. All right, for my man Aaron here. What do you get, sir? Uh, hungry. Hungry. He's hungry. He wants to eat something. Not really an emotion, sir, but we're going to take it anyway. <laughs> Heartbroken. Heartbroken. You are heartbroken. I know, right?
right? Okay. This, by the way, this is Bobby Orlando. Did you wish you had that name? Okay, for you, sir. Ecstatic. 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 And for our lady Betsy right there. Uh, what do you got, ma'am? Oh, mad. Mad. Okay, you're angry. You are just <laughs> me, but okay. Okay. So, once again, give us your emotions. Happy. Hungry or hangry, maybe. Okay, hangry. Alright, Brody. Ecstatic. Ecstatic and? Mad. Beautiful. So, find your spots, co-riders. We're going to start this scene with our carpool to China from five, four, three, two, one. We've been wanting to go there ever since Bob went over there. We went over there and interrupted our darn classes. <laughs> but now we get to go. This is so great. I can't wait. I really, really can't wait. Oh, hi. Uh, Niha, Ma? Okay. Oh, no, no, no. You gotta call. Uh, you gotta call Shaka. Shaka. Oh man, are we really going to China? Yeah. Yeah, we gotta go there. I mean. We, we know Bob went there and... and That's the last place I saw her. It's terrible. I know. I don't want to go back. But the fact that... But I do want to go back. Maybe she's still there. <laughs> but, but I didn't think she was Asian. <laughs> she's not. Oh. She's African. Oh. Hey! Corinthians, 
These are letters between two people. Our epistolaries and improv are a little different because the writer on this side of the letter, bring yourselves up closer, please, is going to speak in one voice. Two people, one voice, speaking as one person. This writer is going to be speaking one word at a time. And they're going to correspond in the letter. What I need from you is a relationship between two people. Raise your hand if you can think of a relationship between two people. What do you got? Divorce. Divorce, okay. Divorcees, okay? So this is a divorce, divorced couple, okay? And um, my one voice people, you will be starting this. They don't know who's who, but they will very shortly remember to sign your letters. Keep them short from three, two, one. Dear Foxhead, <laughs> we're writing about the alimony. It's way too high. We want it way too low because you're already married again. And we're tired of paying. Sign Bob. <laughs> Dear Bob, I am a poor about your letter and will not do what you ask. Sincerely, Sharon. <laughs> Dear Sharon, nothing has changed. You still don't do what I ask. All we want is for you to go to China. <laughs> point to these players, each one of them has to come up with a title of a non-existent movie in that genre. If I find that, that suggestion interesting, I'll go like this, which means they have to give their inner world speech about that movie, <laughs> selling that movie to us. And if they sell it will be well enough, I'll tell them what scenes from that movie I want them to play for you right here in this theater right now. So raise your hand if you can think of a genre of a movie, please. Romantic comedy. Romantic comedy. Romantic comedy. Okay, that's your category, folks. Romantic comedy. Here we go. My movie, my movie, my movie. The lab that never stopped. My movie, my movie, my movie. Uh, dinner in 1995. <laughs> uh, so 1995 was a wicked year. But for Brad and other Brad. <laughs> Turns out that their blind date was with each other, and love ensues. I want to see when they discover Brad and Brad and Brad and Brad. Some 
mistakes in her life, and now she has to pay with her life. Oh. <laughs> Scene is very fun. Give me my my uh, my rant, rant symphony team, please. What we're going to do for you for the first time and the last time in this space is a rant symphony with these amazing improvisers. And here's how it works. You're going to give each one of these players something to rant about. It doesn't matter what you suggest because what you suggest is what they will rant about. Then I'm going to orchestrate those rants with instructions to show you how they can flock. They can act as one, even though they have individual Please, this is a very good illustration of improv. We all come to the stage with different stuff, and yet we need to make it work together. And so this is a, a good example of that. So, so give me something for Dan to rant about. Pokemon. Pokemon. <laughs> Pokemon. <laughs> you know so much about that, man. Okay? Um, for Rod. Cholesterol. Cholesterol. <laughs> cholesterol. Pokemon and cholesterol. You audience, you have a range. <laughs> Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. Okay, good. For my man, Akil, over there in the corner. Okay. Texas. <laughs> 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 All right. Vanilla. I for traffic. I for traffic. Yeah. And for our lady Jade. Pineapple pizza. Pineapple pizza. <laughs> okay. So, hey, audience, bravo for the range. So, once again, tell us what you're raving about. Pokemon. Cholesterol. Mickey Mouse. Pineapple pizza. Texas. I for traffic. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh, work. Let's start this from a blackout, Charlie. Three, two, two one. Why do they put pineapples on pizza? It's disgusting. First of all, fruit and pizza don't go together. Yeah. It's really, really gross. I don't want to hear about it. It doesn't go together. <laughs> Next, it doesn't look good either. Pineapples are all chunky and stuff, and the only thing that is really good on pizza is cheese. Sorry about it, but pineapples don't fit. Twice a day, I take my life into my I take my life into doubt, man. Going on I four, it's like you gotta be freaking crazy to drive on I four, and if you're not about to get hit, you're just standing freaking still. And I don't have like an iPhone, like a USB to plug into music, so you're just sitting there and watching all the crazy people swarm around you, and it just goes absolutely freaking maddening and you just want to like kill yourself and you start beeping at people and beeping at people it's the end of a long day at the magic kingdom i'm in that parking lot there's like six acres i pull it out and boom i look and there's a mouse in the car behind me that i'm thinking he says oh lord i'm going up the truck <laughs> so i'm out and i'm looking for security and i'm thinking what's security gonna do when mickey mouse hit me Everything I love to eat has cholesterol in it. I can't eat kale. I can't eat greens. I can't eat vegetables. I hate them, but everything else has cholesterol, and now they tell me 
me, my cholesterol is too high. How am I supposed to lower up when everything I like has cholesterol in it? My Texas is just hot. <laughs> and not to mention that we're America's border, so like we got so much stuff to do. I went down to do the road the other day, and what do I see? Los Ranchos? Los Ranchos? <laughs> this is America. Let me tell you.
challenge each other to, uh, to say five lines of dialogue, five <laughs> things a blank might say. You have an important role in this exercise. Each time they say a line of dialogue, you have to count. One, two, three, four, five. After you get to five, we all go, that's five things! Because it's broke. And please, do a little fist in Do a little.
some miming in level one, not too much. Don't be scared if you were considering taking classes here at SAC. Um, so for the scene painting, I'm gonna get an environment from the audience. They are gonna set up objects and things that are true about the world that you give us, and then they have to come in and do a scene in the world they've created. So what is a location that you uh, recently spent some time? Okay, are you guys familiar with the the um, uh, luxurious Atlantis Resort? So let's see the sea painting scene at Atlantis Resort in. Fire truck. <laughs> 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 
Cat. C A T. Cat. Please give me the definition of cat. <laughs> when? A. Cat. One. A. Flatter. Cat. <laughs> Oh. Hi. E. A. No. 
And then, with that honey, that grizzly bear went back to its little grizzly bears and taught it the wrong lesson. <laughs> That's right. That grizzly taught the bears that it was correct to steal. Stealing is not good. Do not be a stealer. If you see stealing, call it out. <laughs> That's right. Call it out. Because if you don't, your grizzly bear will wind up behind grizzly bars. <laughs>
Uh, Bob or I will call Freeze! And then uh, the player that has been blind to the action turns around quickly, tags one of them out, assumes their exact physical position, and uses it to inspire a new scene with new characters and a new crush. Bob, you want to suggest? Uh, it's that that easy. All right, yes. Um, um, raise your hand if you can think of an interesting location. An interesting location. A therapist's office. A therapist's office. So this first scene will be inspired by a therapist's office, and then every scene after that will be inspired by the positions that characters take and the calls of these players. So let's see that first scene from three, two, one. Like I don't, I don't know. He tells me he loves me, but like, but does he? I'm paying you for this, so. Yeah, you're this is the fifth time this week you've been here. <laughs> Tinder's a complex ass. <laughs> yeah, I get that. You gotta deal with this, man. You can't just come back here every time the girl doesn't show up or it tells you that you're weird. Or... <laughs> Hi, I'm your new Tinder date. Oh. <laughs> the last one just crushed me right off, left me on the side of the road.
we made it! Yes! 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 Come on! Come on! What was the part? Uh, I'm going to be Othello, and you're... Oh, sorry! The board and I go around! Sweet! Is there a painting? Uh, I might get painted. Freeze! Oh, God. All right. I'm going to put this back. And on the count of three, we're going to draw. And whoever left alive is going to get it. We're going to do three. One.
tonight please support these people as they pursue whatever level they choose to pursue in improv uh, we love you all give it up for our man in the booth Mr. Trent. <laughs> and folks, please help us we've got a nine o'clock show to put on in this auditorium and you can help us this way by one taking any trash you brought into the auditorium and putting it in that bucket over there two by loving your family members outside these doors. Give a quick love in here, but then we need you to exit the auditorium so that we can clean it up and get it ready for the next audience that we have. Anything you want to add to that, Chelsea? That's it, Bob. Wait, wait, wait. Give it up for our wonderful team. Yeah! Yeah!